Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four. It's, it's Friday! Friday. <laughs> we didn't say it last week. I hope you can hear Michael at home. <laughs> I love it. Good job, Michael. Michael, Michael Bruno is yes. here, and he'll be along later to uh, interview a couple of little girls who are going to be on the big stage of the Overture. That's right. We're going to meet some of the young stars of Waitress. All right, and Lola will wrap things up, and we're going to preview Restaurant Week yeah. as well. So Fun show coming up. Lots going on. But first, the news today. Another deadly duck boat crash, this time happening in Branson, Missouri. Now, federal investigators are trying to figure out why the boat was on the water when there's a possibility of strong thunderstorms. Governor Walker issues a state of emergency for Sun Prairie following last week's deadly gas explosion. We'll talk about how communities Community leaders are handling concerns about air quality in their city. And President Trump surprises his director of the national intelligence as he plans for another meeting with Russia's Vladimir Putin. Let's take a look outside today. Another cloudy, rainy one. Yeah, we needed some rain, though. But this uh, scene up at the Dells. Oh, isn't that a beautiful shot? That's where you want to be, on the water. Yep. But we'll be dodging more raindrops if you are. Dave Caulfield is in the backyard right now. No umbrella right now. Well, I do have it literally okay, at the ready. It is in my left hand, ready to go at a moment's notice. And that's kind of the setup over the next couple of days with on and off showers possible tonight into much of Saturday as well. The culprit is this slow moving, what we call cutoff low. That means it's cut off from the rest of the atmospheric flow. So it moves so slowly and it can drop a lot of rain in a short amount of time, but others may not receive barely any rain. So it's it's really hit and miss over the next couple of days. Doppler track showing the bulk of the rain right now closer to the Wisconsin Dells. Madison not seeing any rain at the present time. Still some condensation and some rain on our tower cam on the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. Right now we are at 69 degrees with a little bit of light rain falling at the airport. West northwest wind at seven miles per hour. Temperatures have really stayed cool today with all the clouds and rain around in the upper 60s and low 70s across the area. The exception, Boscobel at 79 degrees. Dew points have come up as well. Pretty humid outside with the rain in town. 67, the dew point in Madison. Some 70s starting to show up a little bit closer to Watertown. Wind speeds, it has been a little bit breezy today with this low pressure system basically right over us. You can actually see that circulation closer to Watertown. Temperatures will stay in the 60s and 70s over the next couple of hours. Your forecast first, taking a look at the clouds in the WIC TV Skycam. Chances for showers and storms aplenty into tonight and tomorrow morning. So let's take a look at your first alert traffic update. Right now we're taking a gander at Park Street and the Beltline. Not looking too bad at the present time, but some delays are popping up as you might expect to Friday in the summer on the Beltline. Lots of red and Yellow showing up on our traffic map here from west to east. You can see some slowdowns in both directions closer to Rimrock Road and John Nolan Drive and even closer to Stoughton Road in the interstate. Some slowdowns starting to pop up this afternoon. So drive times uh, over the next couple of hours are going to stay uh, pretty normal. Um, you know, about 10 to 15 minutes in that normal spot on the uh, on the Beltline eastbound and westbound. So just give yourself a few extra minutes if you are heading out the door trying to get home or trying to get out of Madison over the next couple of hours. And that is your first alert traffic. We will talk more about the on and off shower chances and when the sunshine will reappear for us in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. And the Dane County Fair at the Alignment Energy Center, I think, is causing some of those traffic delays. Yep. We are hoping that we can get some better weather for the end of the fair. All right. We'll check back in a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Missouri Governor Mike Parson says emergency responders and random people helped prevent an even worse tragedy after a duck boat capsized on a lake, killing 17 people. He spent part of the day in the Branson area after the boat sank during a thunderstorm last night. Video from yesterday shows rough waters on the lake. The owner of the duck boat company says nothing like this has ever happened in the company's 47 year history. He says there were life jackets on board, but under law, passengers are not required to wear them. Investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board are now at the scene and will be asking, given the weather conditions, why was the boat out on the water in the first place? And following that deadly accident in Branson, many are wondering if the amphibious vehicles known as ducks are safe. The companies operating in Wisconsin Dells say they plan to learn from this tragedy, but they are also confident that this would not happen here. Amanda Quintana is in the studio with their reaction. Amanda? 
Yes, Susan and Mark. Well, the two duck companies in the Dells are sending their thoughts and prayers to the families involved in that accident. They also want to point out they do everything they can to keep riders safe. The ducks in the Dells are original World War II vehicles, unlike the one involved in last night's tragedy. Local duck company owners say many of the ducks used across the country are manufactured, stretching them to fit more people. In the Dells, if severe weather were to roll in suddenly, the ducks are close enough to the shores of Lake Delton that they can turn back quickly. And we have easy exits all along the two miles uh, that we travel on along the Wisconsin River. Then when we get into Lake Delton, we have an entrance and an exit. They're about 300 plus yards apart. So we're, e we're able to get out of the water at any place within a minute or so. Both Dell's Army Ducks and the original Wisconsin Ducks pay close attention to the weather and will not go out in severe weather. The local police department will also notify the attractions in the Dells if there is severe weather coming in. There are life jackets on board in case of an emergency, but like you guys mentioned earlier, they were not, they don't have to wear those life jackets until there is an emergency. When I asked both companies if they thought the original World War II vehicles were safer than those manufactured, they said they are confident in their training and decades worth of experience. That's reassuring to hear. Mm -hmm. I think when this story first broke, everyone immediately sure. thought of the ducks in yeah. Wisconsin Dells. Amanda Quintana here in the studio. Amanda, thanks. Governor Walker has declared a state of emergency for Sun Prairie and Dane County. Following last week's explosion, the executive order directs state agencies to continue to provide aid to the community and its citizens as they recover. The governor writes, my thoughts and prayers continue with the people of Sun Prairie. This declaration will ensure state agencies provide whatever assistance is needed to help the community rebuild and to help families impacted recover. Following the explosion, the city of Sun Prairie is hearing concerns about debris affecting the quality of air. Some buildings near the explosion site will eventually be demolished and, uh, demolished, and the city is getting a plan in place when that does happen to keep people safe. Rose Schmidt is in the news center to tell us what's causing some of the air quality concerns. Rose? Hi, Mark and Susan. The cleanup closest to the explosion site is still on hold while the death investigation continues, but city officials are looking toward the future. The city administrator says some of the buildings close to the blast site are older and could contain minerals that are hazardous to your health. Some people who live in the area have even told us that it's hard for them to breathe when they're near downtown Sun Prairie. City officials say they are following instructions from the Department of Natural Resources. And so we're doing the best we can as far as handling that debris safely, trying to mitigate any dust, anything going into the air, whether it be asbestos, whether it be lead, lead paint or anything of that nature. DNR has instructed the city to water down debris as it's removed from the area. When the buildings get torn down, they will water debris down in that area as well. The city administrator says if you do have trouble breathing or even feel stress in the aftermath of that explosion, please seek medical attention. A spokesperson for the Public Health Madison and Dane County says the department will also look into air quality issues in the future. Rose Schmidt in the newsroom. Rose, thank you. Former Republican State Senator, Pre State Senate President Mike Ellis has died. Ellis's brother says he died in his sleep. He was 77 years old. Ellis spent decades working in the State House. He made headlines in 2013 when he angrily shouted down Democrats and banged his gavel so hard he broke the base during an abortion debate. President Trump says he wants to have a second summit with Vladimir Putin in Washington, D.C. Today, the White House confirmed it is working to set up a second summit this fall with President Trump and President Putin in Washington. President Trump set off a firestorm after Monday's meeting with the Russian leader. The president later said he misspoke by appearing to side with Putin over U.S. intelligence agencies about Russia's alleged meddling in the presidential election. I'm happy that the two leaders of two very important countries are continuing to meet. Uh, and if that meeting takes place in Washington, I think it's all, all, all to the good. I think it's outrageous that the president is rewarding Putin with another meeting before the election. Russia's ambassador to the U.S. says the Kremlin is considering the offer. President Trump's former lawyer and self-described fixer Michael Cohen allegedly taped a conversation before the presidential election discussing paying off a former Playboy model with Mr. Trump. Angelica Alvarez has more details from the White House. 
The New York Times reports Michael Cohen, President Trump's longtime personal lawyer, secretly recorded a conversation with Mr. Trump about paying off a former Playboy model just two months before the election. According to the Times, the two men talked about paying Karen McDougal in order to keep her from telling her story. She alleges she had a year-long affair with Mr. Trump in 2006. So far, no evidence exists to show Cohen or Mr. Trump paid McDougal, but the National Enquirer paid her $150,000 for the exclusive rights to her story and then never published it, a practice called catch and kill. Mr. Trump is longtime friends with David Pecker, CEO of American Media, the National Enquirer's parent company. The timing of any payments made by President Trump's former lawyer are being examined to see if they violated any federal campaign finance laws. Rudy Giuliani, the president's current lawyer, told The Times the recordings are actually proof the president did nothing wrong. He says the president himself never paid McDougal, and the recordings show he had no knowledge that the National Enquirer was going to pay her either. The Times reported the recordings were seized during an FBI raid of Cohen's home, office, and hotel room earlier this year. Investigators seized more than three million items in the raid. And sources tell CBS News Cohen frequently recorded phone conversations, meaning more tapes with President Trump could exist. Angelica Alvarez for WISC News 3. Cohen has indicated that he might be willing to cooperate with federal prosecutors should he face any charges. He told ABC News earlier this month that his family and his country come first. Several Iowa cities are assessing damage today after several tornadoes moved through the state. At least 17 people were injured. The governor of Iowa spent today touring the damage. Hospitals, a machinery factory, and a country court, uh, courthouse are among the damaged buildings in the central part of the state. Governor Scott Walker is asking the Trump administration to issue a federal disaster declaration for six counties in northwestern Wisconsin. The region saw flooding last month, which washed away many roads. The governor's office says federal assessment shows the flooding caused more than $13 million in damage to public infrastructure. The Federal Emergency Management Agency's public assistance program covers 75% of eligible costs. The state and local communities share the remaining 25%. Well, planning your next trip, maybe Instagram could help. The social media site is having a major influence on travel. How to plan an instication coming up next on <laughs> what? Uh, next at four. There's a new word for you.
Well, it will soon be legal to post plans for 3D printable guns online. The government has reached an agreement with a gun rights activist that will allow the plans to be posted next month. Back in 2013, a man named Cody Wilson posted plans for a 3D printable gun. The government ordered him to remove it, arguing that the plans could violate international traffic in arms regulations. Wilson complied but sued the federal government in 2015. Now, Wilson will be able to repost schematics for what he calls the Liberator, a gun made almost entirely out of ABS plastic. That is a similar material used to make Lego bricks. Another drug company is promising to cut prices on some medications. Merck says it will lower the price of Sepetir, which is a drug for hepatitis C, by 60%. It's also dropping the price of six other drugs, including Prinavil for high blood pressure and the antidepressant Remeron. Merck also says it will not raise the average price of the drugs beyond the annual rate of inflation in the U.S. The pharmaceutical industry has been the subject of criticism because of climbing drug prices. In May, President Trump issued a blueprint for bolstering competition and reducing regulations in the drug industry. Well, Instagram now has over a billion users around the world, and its influence is inspiring instications. People are planning their vacations off of photos <laughs> that other people post on their Instagram accounts. Henadova explains this new travel trend. This picture-perfect view of the Empire State Building through the base of the Manhattan Bridge is no longer a neighborhood secret. Thanks to Instagram, it's drawing tourists from around the world. We know that this street is very famous because of the view. One, two, three. Anna Berenger has visitors from Brazil. They saw this spot on Instagram and headed over to the Dumbo section of Brooklyn. It has to be this particular street and this particular spot to get the right angle of the bridge. Mark Elwood is a contributing editor of Condé Nast Traveler. He says when it comes to tourism, Instagram is the new navigator. New Zealand is one of the hottest destinations in the world, partly because its scenery is so Instagrammable. It <laughs> looks like the moon. Photogenic scenery like this is especially important to millennials. A recent study found that 40% of them consider Instagrammability a top priority when planning trips. That's a big number when you consider an estimated 60% of millennial travelers are on Instagram, a 375% increase from 2013. We're not picking a vacation destination and taking a picture once we get there. We're thinking, can I get a great picture? If I can't, I'm not going to go. The social media platform is also a tool for travel agents. Instagram is now their brochure, and it's helped put this little street in Brooklyn on the map. Hanadoba, CBS News, New York. Instagram. The world's passing me by, Susie. <laughs> Stocks were mostly unchanged on Wall Street as the threat of more tariffs loomed. The Dow Industrials lost six points, ending the week at 25,058. The NASDAQ Composite Index lost five. The S&P 500 was off two and a half. Well, you have a chance to sample some of the best dining available in the greater Madison area this week. Yeah, starting on we're Sunday. Studying, yeah. 50 area restaurants are participating in Summer Restaurant Week. A dining room captain at Rare Steakhouse, Ryan Mar Marate is here to tell us about uh, a special promotion that they have for Restaurant Week this summer. Hi, Ryan. Good Ryan? to see you. Thank you, Mark and Susan. What Appreciate did it. you make today? What are you so, bringing? I plan on making some uh, filet mignon tartare provided by Allen Brothers Art Beef. Um, so I will, uh, if you'd like, go into this. Now, what is steak tartare? So it's raw beef, uh, basically something that started in nomadic times, actually, in Mongolia. So it was actually uh, lost that people thought it was made in France, but actually beyond that. Uh, so in the travels of the nomadics, they would uh, need something uh, immediately mm -hmm. to eat. And so they uh, had this on the fly and would be able to eat something on the go. And so it's called the Dance of the Tartars. It's, it's safe to eat raw, raw beef? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this uh, product, I mean, came in today from Chicago, um, right off our uh, truck. And so that's the uh, beef tenderloin sliced up by our chef, Nick here. And you prepare this table side. Absolutely. And the only option in the state that has. Absolutely. So we uh, also feature our bananas foster. We do table side, uh, fresh order as well. And this is something was uh, just started over a week ago. So we're very excited to do this. How do you prepare it? Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm going to yeah. start. Uh, so I have a little Fienerbs Bew here. So. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so the Fienerbs Bew <laughs> is a mix of sherbet, chives, parsley, and tarragon. Oh, it uh, and then wonderful. I have some wonderful pickled mustard. We pickle that in house. Oh, the smells are spectacular. So, 
Uh, then I also have some fresh chopped capers. Okay. And tomato tapenade. And the whole idea on, about Restaurant Week is to go to restaurants you wouldn't necessarily go to. Absolutely. Because it's affordable. Yeah, absolutely. And you can try different things. Indeed. It's three dishes. It's an appetizer, an entree, and a des dessert for a set price. So it's really a great opportunity. So you do some salt and pepper. Oh, Correct. I love that salt. Sea milk. salt, fresh black pepper. And this is something we're going to be featuring during Restaurant Week in addition to our Restaurant Week menu. So we'll have Do other options. Do you mix it together or you serve it just yep. like that? So I've got also, I'm going to add a little quail egg here that I will actually cut into. Oh, I thought those were chocolates. <laughs> I wish they were. <laughs> so, so you put a, a raw egg in there too? Yes, I do. And that's safe? It is. Okay. <laughs> I. But now, now burger is a different, <laughs> hamburger is a different thing. Correct. That's Correct. not safe to eat raw. I would not personally at okay. all. If, it's, if you process it yourself in your own home, that'd be a different story. Right. Now, I also have one of the best things that we're going to have is a summer black truffle imported from Italy. What do those cost a piece? Well, they're around <laughs> $100 a pound right now. Wow. So we have some wonderful fresh aromas that we're creating here. I really wish you could smell this at home. Yeah. It smells wonderful. And what I'll do here is actually mix in uh, this dish up. We'll get this beautiful, and you'll just, all those aromas are just so coming you, through. You break the yolk of the egg, you just mix it all together. Indeed. And then how do you serve it? Just like that? Um, so I will actually tra transport it to this wonderful blue uh, glass plate dish over here. Okay. And we'll do that right now. And it's a good idea to make reservations. Absolutely. It gets Please pretty crowded. call ahead. Yeah, yeah, restaurant Week is one of the busiest times of the year. Have you done it for several years, Ryan? I've done it over about 20 different Restaurant Weeks personally. Is it a lot of fun? I or love is it, it a lot of work? Both. Yes. A lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have myself uh, every day, mostly. You know, and, and Rare is a, a high-end restaurant, and this gives people an opportunity to, to check it out. Indeed. And please come in and try it, because we are going to make sure that you love black truffles, <laughs> and I'm going to put some more on this, because... All right. Well, There's not enough on it. You want to try this, Susan? Do you serve it on uh, on bread, or are you just... Right on this baguette that I got, um, some fresh uh, country bread. baguette. And voila, we have... Voila! Ryan, that's beautiful. That's Thank beautiful. you. Absolutely. Would you like to try some, Susan? Uh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you bet. So restaurant week starts Sunday. It goes through Thursday or Friday, depending on the restaurant. Go to madisonmagazine.com for a list of all the restaurants and the menus. This is not going to appear on the Rare menu online. Correct, but it is on our menu in the restaurant. All right. Well, Ryan, you? thank you so much Absolutely. for spoiling thank you guys. us with this. Have a My, great restaurant week. Will do. My pleasure, guys. Thank mm. you. Wow, that's good. <laughs> that is really, wow. <laughs> A lot of flavors here. Awesome. Ryan, thank you. Thank you, Thank Ryan. you, guys. We'll be right back. You can read, so I'll try it now. We'll be right That's all I got to do.
Take a look at this. New York's Baccarat Hotel serves up a pretty opulent ice cream sundae. It's made up of house-made Madagascar vanilla ice cream on top of black truffle crumble, truffles again, topped by a champagne sauce, all inside a white coconut shell, hand-painted with green strokes of red, or strokes of red, green, and yellow colored cocoa butter. And that's all covered with gold leaf and silver flakes, spun, uh, spun sugar in the shape of a nest, rust on top with edible flowers, all served in a Baccarat crystal and porcelain bowl. How much do you ask? $1,500. And you can take the bowl home with you. Oh, otherwise, there you go. Otherwise, it's $300 without the bowl. What a savings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why would you get the bowl? Because I... it's Baccarat crystal. Oh, please. Can you eat the bowl? No, it's well, crystal. Well, then I, then I don't know why you get it. That's almost too pretty to eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is, pretty. it is Friday, July 20th. It is nap day. Naps that are between 10 and 30 minutes improve mood, alertness, and performance mentally and physically. I like to take naps that I like to call coma naps, which are about five to six hours. <laughs> yeah, six so. hours. That's right. called sleepy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It is National Fortune Cookie Day. Here you go, Dave. Let's, you want to pick a fortune? Let's get sure. I love fortune cookies. This fun and inspirational dessert is more uh, Asian American, really, than it is Chinese. All right. Let's, what does my fortune say? What does it say? It says, your present plans are going to succeed. Oh, that's a good one. How about you, Dave? Uh, you are a practical person with your feet on the ground. Literally, <laughs> my feet are on the ground right now. Amazing. Practical. Amazing. Practically amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, mine's kind of lame. Sell your ideas. They are usually <laughs> acceptable. Not always. <laughs> Not always. It, <laughs> you That's right. You can't win them all. You want a second? No, you yeah. can't do a do-over. <laughs> we'll just go through All them. right. And it's Moon Day. On this date in 1969, astronaut Neil Armstrong climbed down the lunar module to become the first man ever to walk on the moon. Remember, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. His feet were on the ground of That's the moon. Right. That's right. Oh my gosh, everything comes full circle. You told He's... me a cute story when you were in eighth grade. You looked up in the moon and you, well, when it was happening? It was a Sunday night and I remember we were golfing and my dad and my sister and I were driving home and I look up at the moon and said, there's a, a guy's going to walk on that in a few minutes. And wow. Home, and I'm going to watch the moon walk. Oh, that's wow. pretty Did cool. you know before that? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was, <laughs> all, it was, it was all the papers. I thought you were just it like, you sensed deal. it. <laughs> yeah. No, I did, yeah. Like they, it was in your fortune or they make it. Like they that. made a big announcement. Uh, oh, okay. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a big deal or anything like that. But um, we're looking to see if rain will be on the ground, along with my feet in this fortune. <laughs> so we will... Go over the possibility of some more scattered showers and thunderstorms in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes.
Good afternoon. Happy Friday. We have had a good dose of rain on this Friday because of this low pressure system. Look at how massive this thing is. This is what we call a cutoff low pressure system, which means it's cut off from the atmospheric flow way high up in the atmosphere. And what that means is it's pretty slow moving. There's not a lot in the atmosphere to help push this along to the east. So we have to wait for it to take its sweet time to get out of here. And that means Lots of rain chances over the last couple of days and into tomorrow as well. Some more rain chances come our way. You could see the circulation on radar right now. Most of that rain and maybe a few strikes of lightning, some rumbles of thunder closer to the Dells right now, but some more rain showers possible for much of southern Wisconsin into this evening and tonight. Already the rain over the last 24 hours. This is the type of setup folks where some of us get next to nothing as far as rain is concerned and some of us get a whole lot in a short amount of time. So about three to three and a half inches of rain over the last 24 hours showing up in spots close to Platteville and Monroe. Janesville about two and a half inches of rain radar estimated closer to Madison about a half an inch to an inch of rain so far today at the airport just over an inch of rain recorded. So our monthly rain total up to about two and three quarters of an inch of rain. So we made up our deficit in the span of one day. It's crazy how that can happen, especially in the summertime with these thunderstorms. Our time lapse in Madison showing multiple rounds of rain coming through during the morning and into the early afternoon. Right now we're in a quiet period. We do have some rain on our lens here on the WIC TV sky cam, but don't put that umbrella away yet, folks, because some more rain is possible tonight and into tomorrow as well. West Northwest wind at seven miles per hour. And as I say that we're getting more rain to fall on the tower cam. I see you, Mother Nature. I see you trying to follow my plans. Dew point in the upper 70s, so it does feel humid outside across much of the area. Downtown Madison on the Edgewater sky cam, a gloomy looking sky right now. The Almanac 76 the high today. That's about five degrees below normal for this time of year. Temperatures are in the 60s and 70s really kept cool with the cloud cover and rain nearby. Dew points are pretty humid at the same time. We're in the upper 60s, even some 70s showing up closer to Waukesha and Watertown. Wind speeds, you can actually see the circulation on our wind speed map here. The center of that low pressure system moving closer to Milwaukee at the present time. So those winds out of the north and west at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Breezy today, breezy tomorrow as well. Maybe, just maybe, we can sneak in some peaks of sunshine tomorrow. I'm not that optimistic, folks, with this low pressure system just so slow, slowly moving out of here. I don't think we'll be able to shake those clouds just yet with temperatures in the mid 70s for highs tomorrow. Hopefully, we can get some dry periods, though, so we can continue to have fun at the Dane County Fair. Future track showing things really just taking their time to borrow a Boston lyric there, but we're not talking about Boston. We're talking about Madison. High pressure trying to save us from these clouds and rain showers. Pretty unsuccessful though. On Sunday, I do think that low is just far enough to the east that many of us don't have to worry about showers, although a slight chance for some spots closer to Lake Michigan tonight. Temperatures in the 60s with scattered showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Breezy, very mild with more scattered showers and thunderstorms possible. This is really the way it goes when a cutoff low visits where you live and it's a pretty classic setup with lots of clouds. Maybe just maybe some peaks of sunshine tomorrow, but also some more showers and thunderstorms possible on Sunday. I think those showers really stay closer to the lake shore and temperature is a little bit warmer over the next couple of days. We could expect about a quarter to a half an inch of more rain. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, it really depends on where those downpours set up. So be ready. Have that umbrella with you into tomorrow and for some of Sunday for some of us. But I think most of those storms will be well to the east. Temperatures in the 80s on Monday and Tuesday. Slight chance of storms on Wednesday with temperatures a little bit cooler. Then we are in the 70s Thursday, Friday and Saturday. That's when we get our sunshine back before some more showers and storms Maybe. possible next Sunday. No 90s? No 90s. It could be a lot warmer this time of year, yeah. but not the case this time. And 
this low pressure system really keeping those temperatures down as well. We needed the rain. Yes. And we got it. And we yeah. did. Or some people, at least. Yeah. And we didn't even have to open a fortune cookie for that. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> yes. All right, Dave, thank you. Thank you, Dave. And with a cooler, rainy weekend on tap, you might be thinking of taking in a movie. A good one opens this weekend. A must-see for ABBA fans. It's Mamma Mia! Here we go again, this time featuring Cher. Of course. I can't wait to see this one. We'll preview it when Live at Four continues. This is... Mamma Mia, it's a sequel. <laughs> the cast of Mamma Mia have reunited 10 years after the original film. This time they're joined by film and music legend Cher. Rick Damagella has a preview. Mamma Mia, here I go again. My, my. How could they resist? The cast of 2008's box office smash reunite for Mamma Mia, here we go again. It was just we picked up where we left off 10 years ago. Mm. in friendship and in, in, in a community of actors. And to be part of a company like this is, is so magnificent. The movie is a prequel sequel with events taking place before and after the original's plot. Lily James plays the young version of Meryl Streep's character, Donna. I'm in the exact same place that she was all those years ago. Actually watching this film, I felt such love because I had the time of my life making it. So watching it, I just remembered like, oh my God, that's where I was, that I lived that and it's kind of, like, you know. And it's kind of nice that none of it, it wasn't like centered on any one of mm. us. It's like, it wasn't all my face up there. And it wasn't, you know what I mean? Like I got to get lost in your story. Let's get the party started. Grandma, you weren't invited. That's the best kind of party, little girl. Cher is among the newcomers to the cast. Her co-stars say her scene performing Abba's Fernando was quite memorable. They were close enough, Fernando. Every hour, every minute seemed to last 
It was quite astonishing, wasn't it? It was truly astonishing. I mean, I'm a big fan of Cher, and to see Cher and Andy Garcia, to see Andy mm -hmm. dressed up doing his thing with, with, with uh, Cher was just sheer heaven. And everyone came out, everyone brought their girlfriends, their mothers, their fathers, their boyfriends, were all there on set watching her do her thing. There was something in the air that night The stars were bright from down home Having a chance to sing with Cher, obviously, to me, is, uh, that was... It, I, it, the bucket list was to work with her as an actress, but to actually sing was just like a... beyond uh, a gift from... For me, it was how much fun we were all able to have. I've never been on a set where people were so easy going and having so much fun. And, and it was like real, you know? Like we would go from sitting and talking in our chairs to going out and doing what we were gonna do and it was never fake. Dancing along in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Mamma Mia, here we go again. The prequel sequel opens today. We'll find out what our movie critic Will Loper thinks about it Monday here on Live at 4. Cher is 72. She looks great. I, <laughs> what a great addition to yeah. the cast. All right, we'll be right back. We got a full stage here. Yes, two, Wisconsin, <laughs> two Wisconsin girls will take the stage at the Obiture Theater when Waitress comes to town next week. They're here now along with their moms and Michael Bruno, Bruno for this week's Backstage with Bruno segment. Welcome, everybody. Hi, right, everybody. Michael, why don't you do the introductions for okay, us? Okay, this is Rosie Manson and her mom, and this is Addie Manthe and her mom. 
And tell us, tell us about what's going on here. Uh, they have been locally cast to be in the show, the, the, the Broadway touring company of Waitress. So there were about uh, 45 girls that auditioned, and these two wonderful little actresses won the role, and they'll be sharing the role during the run here in Madison. The role of Lulu, she's the daughter of the lead uh, in the play. And they can't even rehearse till the show gets to town. That's correct. They won't even have their first rehearsal until Tuesday, I think it is. Is that right, moms? Yep. Rosie, how old are you? Five. And Addie, how old are you? Four. And what was it like to be on the stage auditioning? Was it fun? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Why was it fun? Um, because I liked it. <laughs> you did? <laughs> were you nervous? You were. How about you, Rosie? Were you nervous? Yeah. You were? What did what, 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 you think when you get, found out you are going to be doing this, that you got picked? Mm. Were you excited? Yeah. Yeah? Are do you, you, are do you, you have nervous? to learn a lot of lines? Mm. I don't think, do they have do you lines? Know, do you know you can you do, do your lines, lines that you're going to do in the show? Mm. Do you know it? <laughs> can you do it? Do it for us. Oh, well, she thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a silent show. <laughs> so, so why, do you, why do you want to get your, your daughters involved in this? Um, Rosie comes from a theater family. Um, we all are active in our community theater, and um, her older sister, we put her into some acting classes, and Rosie was just barely old enough to do it, and we thought it would be fun. So. You live in La Crosse. We do. So what was it like to come back down here and see an audition at the, <laughs> on the overture stage? Honestly, Must have been amazing. We, we, I signed up for it, and then I canceled it, and then I signed up for <laughs> it again. <laughs> and I pulled her out of summer school art class to do it, and just I figured it would just be a fun day that we had spent together in Madison. I didn't ever think that she would. And, and Addie seems like a, quite a performer. Yeah, she's, uh, she's had some experience modeling, but never acting, so this will be something new for her, but she's definitely an entertainer at heart, I think. She just loves to make people smile. And, and you live in Sun Prairie? Yeah. What kind of a commitment is this going to be for the girls? Like, will you have to... Uh, a, a decent one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not driving from La Crosse, so uh, we're not too far, but um, we'll be... Um, Weeknights, it'll be kind of rough. Maybe the next morning, and then a full day on a uh, full weekend day. So that's going to be. It's going to be exciting. What an experience! <laughs> what an experience! Wait, waitress opens Tuesday. It opens Tuesday and runs through Sunday. Can't wait to see you guys on stage. Good luck, you guys. Break the leg. That's what they say, right? <laughs> You'll Thanks be signing autographs at the door afterwards, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. You bet. Thanks, Remember, everyone. you met him here first. <laughs> Remember wait. these names. <laughs> we'll be right back with a final check here for Thank you so much, guys. Good to see you. <laughs>
Some rain coming? Yep, uh, some more scattered showers and thunderstorms possible as we head into tonight and tomorrow as well. A lot of clouds will be around tomorrow. Temperatures will be in the mid-70s, but keep that umbrella at the ready. Sunday, I think we start to see that sun again. No, no washout. No washout. No. All right. All right, Dave, thank you. Lola's Lowdown after the break. Lola and Louie have been poring over the best <laughs> animal stories of the week. And here they are in this week's edition of Lola's Lowdown. This week on the Lowdown, it's a love triangle. It's mom versus bear. And walk this way. But first, Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey is welcoming three new Eurasian lynx cubs into the world. The two females and one male bouncy cubs weighed just two pounds each at birth, but will grow to about 50 pounds. The cubs are born with dark ear tufts, signature to their species. The fuzzy felines are native to cold climates and have webbed feet to help them walk in snow. Pretty amazing creatures. This bear picked the wrong porch to try and poach from. A Lake Tahoe woman uses her best mom voice to let a bear know who's boss. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, go! Go away! And go away it did. Don't mess with mom. You have to cry.